Hey you, yeah you, are you a wastelander who's disheartened with his lot in life? Well if so, you might be the perfect fit for Kaiser's Legion. Heralding itself as civilization reborn, Kaiser's Legion embodies the values of loyalty, justice, and martial excellence. As a soldier in the Legion, you'll be able to spend your days outdoors, get plenty of exercise, crucify degenerates, the possibilities are endless. So join Kaiser's Legion, because hey, we did wrong. Kaiser's Legion's long-term goal is to conquer the new California Republic, and through that conquest, combine the civilian culture and infrastructure with the Legion's military, thus creating an entirely new empire. Kaiser explains his motives and plans for this via Hegelian dialectics, a discourse method consisting of both a thesis and a diametrically opposed antithesis which are bound to conflict with one another. The subsequent result of this conflict creates a synthesis between the two, removing the flaws in both and creating an entirely new construct. He ultimately plans to overthrow the NCR Council and rule as its new dictator, while simultaneously transforming the Legion itself to a standing military force that protects its citizens and his own personal power. Kaiser refers to this as a Pax Romana, or Roman peace, which was based on a 200 year period of Roman history where there were no conflicts due to everyone being under Roman law. The intended consequence of this is a new society, combining the best of both the NCR and the Legion. The process of doing so would in a way destroy both factions and create something entirely unique. Now in this video, I'm not stating definitively that the Legion would be able to conquer the NCR. What we are instead focusing on is the format of this hypothetical society envisioned by Kaiser, the premise of which would be that the Legion had been victorious in the Mojave and had used the momentum to campaign onto the NCR. Kaiser then wrests control from its ruling president and council and works towards the fusion of the NCR and Legion via the previously mentioned discourse method based in Hegelian dialectics. We'll start by observing the synthesis of the two from a military standpoint. The NCR military, rather than being made up of career soldiers and untrained conscripts with minimal training and equipment, would be recrafted into an elite warrior caste dedicated to protect something greater than themselves. Its officers would no longer be promoted based on nepotism, as seen with General Oliver or Colonel Moore, but via meritocracy, allowing the strongest and brightest to flourish. Its soldiers would be taught that their weapons are not what enabled them to be strong, but rather training and the willingness for battle. This can be seen directly in game, with the NCR forces, although equipped with modern weaponry and advanced numbers, losing ground due to lack of morale, training and supplies. Meanwhile, Legion troops, armed primarily with spears and knives, decimate NCR forces via their willingness for self-sacrifice and their skill in battle. Leading on from this, it may be imagined that the NCR's technological might, combined with the Legion's seeming technophobia, may not mesh well. However, the Legion are not Ludites. While committed to a lack of over-reliance on technology, Kaiser is willing to allow his soldiers to use advanced weaponry if they have proved that they are capable enough warriors without it. This can be seen from his Praetorian Guards and Centurions. As such, the Legion would be able to benefit directly from the acquisition of new tech appropriated from the merger with the NCR. From a numerical view, the Legion would also have a larger pool to conscript future generations of Legionaries from in occupied territory it now controls. While not every NCR soldier would want to fight for the Legion, there would be at least a considerable amount that would, through either willingness or coercion. There are also still confirmed tribes out west that had yet to be pacified, who would imaginably join the Legion either by being gang-pressed or because tribes revere strength. It is also through this synthesis that the most self-destructive flaws of the Legion could be phased out. The Legion in its current state is a culture fueled by warmongering, conquest and assimilation. It is described as an all-consuming beast that upon reaching the sea would begin to cannibalize itself. However, upon seizing control of the NCR, the attention of the military would be focused less on conquest of new territory, but the protection of its own. Segwaying on from a military perspective, we'll focus next on the synthesis of commerce and trade in this new society. The immediate aftermath would be that the Legion would be able to absorb the NCR's mercantile empire for their own. They'd then be able to integrate the NCR trade routes and expand farther east, south and north. Although categorised as a roving army, 
the Legion has already displayed a degree of aptitude for logistics and administration. This can be supported by multiple in-game examples. Dale Barton, a trader found in the fort, prefers to trade in the Legion-occupied territories of Arizona and New Mexico. Hell, I don't even need to travel with guards most of the time in Legion territory. All the bandits are dead or run off. Companion Raul Tejada supports this claim and openly expresses his positive opinion of the Legion. But I've been to Arizona, boss. Before the Legion, it was a nasty place. So thick with the raiders you couldn't trade with a town two miles up the road. Companion, Caravaneer, and NCR citizen Cassidy even expresses her disappointment that the NCR is unable to protect or look after its trade routes compared to the Legion. The NCR run trade routes, while being far safer than before the NCR was in power, are still considered less effective at protecting their interest and the personnel of traders and caravaneers who make up its nation. Protection fees, as well as the taxes imposed on traders to do business in the NCR states, are recorded to be extremely high. On top of this, there's also alleged widespread corruption of the NCR military in charge of the trade routes, who are known to extort caravans and traders passing through their routes. Obviously, it can be argued that the Legion is not always entirely benevolent to traders as well, with Dale Barton stating, He killed one of my pack Brahmins simply because it was in his way. I knew better than to complain about it though. Members of the Legion can even be found ambushing caravans on their trade routes. However, it is important to note that the Mojave is an active war zone for the Legion, and they do so in order to weaken NCR supply lines. The Legion overall is adept at taking care of those that it considers its own. Their major draw card being that their fearsome reputation provides an unparalleled level of security in a chaotic wasteland. When an NCR caravan is ambushed, an investigation is lodged, the local council sends requisition forms for soldiers, and the subsequent soldiers eventually might arrest or kill the offenders. When a legion caravan is ambushed, a contaminium is put together, the offenders are tracked down and crucified. Even the most hardened raider gang would be hesitant to attack any caravan marked by the legion, no matter how far out of its territory it may be. This synthesis would allow the combination of the pre-existing NCR trade empire with the Legion's ability to actually protect the caravans, greatly improving the economic capacity of this new society. Moving on from trade, much of what we see of the Legion comes from locations such as the Fort, the Legardis' Camp, Cottonwood Cove, Nelson, and Nipton. These locations in the context of the games are used as frontline bases in an active war zone and are able to give a clear picture of the Legion military apparatus. What was less clear was the role of civilian society in the Legion. Project director and lead designer for Fallout New Vegas, Joshua Sawyer, had stated that planned content had unfortunately been cut that would have provided players with a greater scope of the Legion civilians on the eastern side of the Colorado River. These non-enslaved inhabitants of Legion territory would not be considered citizens, but as non-tribal subjects who work and live within the Legion. It would have shown them enjoying safe, relatively happy lives with a consistent flow of electricity, food, and water. The only thing they would need to fear is running afoul of the Legion itself. These subjects would be shown to have very little control over their own communities, but would be guaranteed a peaceful and caring lordship so long as they stayed true to Kaiser. While this idea of trading liberty for personal safety is fairly repulsive in our society, in the context of the Fallout universe, it's easy to see how this would be attractive to many. The average wastelander lives in constant fear for the creatures and denizens of the post-war United States. Cass herself even claims that some people in the NCR would be willing to side with the Legion due to the safety that they provide. Once the Legion conquers the NCR, the former NCR civilians under Legion rule would live lives akin to the current Legion subjects. It is then hoped that via this synthesis that the elements of NCR civilian culture would be able to influence the culture of the Legion itself. For example, the Legion is categorised as misogynistic, and certain Legion members will express these views in game. As a quick disclaimer, I want to state that I don't agree with the Legion's misogyny or homophobia, and I'm simply just explaining their context within the games. However, it is important to note that Kaiser himself is not a misogynist. He has no problem employing a female courier, and we even mint a new coin celebrating them that becomes part of the Legion's currency. Rather, the laws enacted that limit the roles of women in Legion society are based on pragmatism, rather than personal animosity. Joshua Sawyer states that, Kaiser's Legion is subdivided by Kaiser based on gendered and sex roles. These subdivisions are sexist inherently, but they're neither misogynistic nor misandric. 
The Legion assigns women the roles of caretakers, midwives, priestesses, and breeders in order to maximize their output of children and increase the population growth of legionaries. Homosexuality is criminalized given the mindset that each legionary having sex with each other would impact the mandated child quotas given to all legionaries. Once the legion controls the NCR territories, these laws may potentially be relaxed. Acquiring a large population base could allow women to undertake a larger role within society and the military, providing Kaiser and his heirs with a larger pool to draw their soldiers from. This lack of necessity for child quotas could then in turn relax laws against homosexuality. These could be further enhanced by the former Republic civilians' attitudes towards gender and sexuality, influencing the culture of the Legion itself. These synthesized changes do admittedly sound idealistic, and Kaiser explains away many of the projected goals of his Legion as inevitable consequences that would just happen naturally. This is primarily due to his perception that the current events are a preordained cycle that led to the original Kaiser's usurpation of the Roman Senate, and although it is dangerous to, in Arcade's words, abdicate responsibility to a myth of historical inevitability, it is premature to state definitively that this could not come to pass. Fundamental changes to a culture of a society does take many generations, but it is important to note that the Legion is a relatively young faction at only 34 years. A huge portion of its members are reconditioned tribals who still have memories of their lives before the Legion. Even the oldest legionary born within the Legion itself would still be in their early 30s at most. It's not a guarantee, but it would support the idea that its members would be flexible and young enough to adapt to a new way of being within the Legion. Kaiser understands that for the Legion to survive after his death, it needs to change from what it currently is. To paraphrase Josh Shoyo again, Kaiser's Legion is an imitation of the Roman Legion, but without any of the Roman society that supported the Roman Legion. It isn't the Roman Empire or the Roman Republic. It's a slave army with the trappings of foreign conscripted Roman legionaries during the late empire. All military, no civilian, and with none of the supporting civilian culture. In Kaiser's mind, the legion in its current form is not what it's destined to be. The brutality, slavery, misogyny, and cultural annihilation is merely a means to an end. If I can use a weird example to explain Kaiser's perception, the legion is currently like Cell from Dragon Ball Z in his imperfect form, once he integrates more people, he is able to reach his perfect form and become a truly unique individual. Kaiser's further motivation for this is that he sees the NCR as following the same steps of the original US government. Failure is not an option, as the alternative could lead to the same pettiness and decadence that led to the Great War. The synthesis and elimination of the two cultures is ultimately an effort to save both. In the NCR's effort to give everyone a voice, no one is heard they are unable to sustain their own citizens, and in their imperialism to acquire more territory, they contradict the very foundation of democracy and peace that they have been founded on. The Legion is described as a wildfire that would burn itself out when there's nothing left to consume. Its legionaries fight for the Legion against all foes, but once the NCR is assimilated, they would fight to defend it. The question ultimately has to be asked if a liberal democracy can exist in a world of nightmarish horrors, radioactive wastes, and collapse civilizations. The Legion's actions may not be good, but it's through these same actions they're able to accomplish good. And at the end of the day, we must ask ourselves if the ends justify the means. The NCR would hold a debate across its ruling council to get each member's opinion. But within the Legion, Kaiser would answer for us all, always.